Hey folks, I wanted to take some time today to show you our latest greenhouse project. Considering that this weekend is all about the Greenhouse Design Summit and you're going to be hearing from all sorts of amazing speakers, um, I wanted to take some time and talk about our most recent project. And so for the last almost two years now, uh, including design, so the design phase plus construction, we've been working on this incredible greenhouse. And so today I want to give you a tour it's not done yet, which is a great opportunity for you guys to see some of the inner workings of the greenhouse uh, before everything gets clad up and set in motion. So the front part here is the passive solar greenhouse. And so you can see that we've got the glazing surface and uh, the glazing surface is consisting of uh, rafters, which are going vertically up and purlins, which are going horizontally across. Now let's go a little bit closer and take a bit of a closer look at the detail. And I apologize if there's some wind noise, it's kind of windy today, but uh, the light's good so we took a, a shot at taking the film. Um, so the rafters are going in this orientation and the purlins are going horizontally across. And you'll notice that underneath we've got an LVL, which is a piece of engineered wood. Uh, it's basically laminated plywood and that's what holds the glazing up. And then we've got uh, blocking on top right here so that the purlins which are going in the opposite direction and the blocking form a level surface for the glazing to sit on that's really important um, and so very soon we're gonna actually put our 16 mil polycarbonate on top of here which will form a roof and glazing surface for the greenhouse now down low we've got our knee wall which we talk a lot about uh, when we're designing passive solar greenhouses and the knee wall uh, sits on top of the concrete footing and on top of that we've got our windows uh, which will actually actually act as our vent wall and so we're going to have mechanically operated vents that open and close based on temperature which will allow fresh cool air to come in to the greenhouse <laughs> to keep the greenhouse cool and so we're just getting those ordered right now and these will go on uh, sometime in the next couple of weeks uh, and then integrate it into the siding. And then the mechanical operator that we're going to use is a linear actuator, which will run on a 24 volt circuit and relay, um, which goes back to a central brain, which we're, we'll talk about in a future video uh, that makes decisions with regards to when these windows should open and close. So if we come around the side now, what makes this greenhouse really unique is that it's not just a greenhouse. So the greenhouse actually has, if we come in here, we'll get a bit less wind. <coughs> the greenhouse actually has a kitchen and three separate root cellars underneath it. And you might wonder why are we wanting to put a greenhouse and a root cellar or a series of root cellars together? Well, the larger context of the project is that the client wanted to have food security. And so the greenhouse actually builds into a larger project. Um, namely, we've got a garden right over here. And so food will come out of that garden, um, as will food will also come out of the greenhouse as well. And so we need to be able to prepare it, uh, preserve it, and store it. And so between this garden, between the ranch that we run down the valley, and the greenhouse, we will be able to grow all the food that's required uh, for that food security goal. So we're gonna go into the kitchen next, and or so we're eventually gonna go into the kitchen, you know, the greenhouse next, then the kitchen, and then we'll go through the different root cellars and the different functions of them. If you've watched my past videos on greenhouses, you'll recognize that this looks pretty similar to the greenhouse that we have on our farm. It's about 800 square feet, and just come on into the greenhouse here and I'll show you some of the details. So we're just getting ready to set up the solar wall right here. And so this wall has been strapped with one by one and you'll notice that there's vertical and horizontal strapping. So there will be a piece of um, expanded tin with perforations in it, similar to what's on my greenhouse at home. And it's gonna sit right on top of this wood and go all the way down, all the way up. And the metal itself is gonna be black. And so as that metal gets hit with sunlight, it's gonna heat up. And because we've created an airspace in here, we have the ability to extract and vent the wall. 
So we can extract the thermal energy that gets picked up on the air um, in order to heat that air up. It also serves as um, a cooling function for the wall right here, which is shared with the kitchen so that we don't overheat the kitchen too much. And the, uh, the surface here, this is actually a magnesium oxide board that we use. So all the, the entire greenhouse is built out of a product from ZS2, which builds uh, structurally insulated panels. Uh, basically two pieces of magnesium oxide board sandwiched together with EPS, expanded polystyrene, uh, to form these wall systems. And so this is a coating on top of the mag oxide board by a company called Weatherskin, which makes sure that vapor and moisture doesn't move through the wall system and cause rot. And you'll notice it's black, and even though it's only about five or six degrees today, the, uh, the wall is actually really warm because it's picked up a whole bunch of solar energy. And so we're gonna do the same thing with this black metal that's gonna sit on top of this strapping right here, and it's gonna be that much more effective because we can actually move air through the wall and pick up heat. Now, we're gonna have a duct up top here, which is gonna pick up that solar air and create a vacuum behind the strapping here. And this greenhouse also has a geothermal heat storage system. And so this pipe, similar to the one in my greenhouse, goes underground, goes straight down, elbows over, manifold across the greenhouse, and pipes run lengthwise under the soil here, and then back to another manifold right there, which then kicks air out. And uh, in, in doing that, when this wall is operating, it heats the soil up. So we're gonna have better plant growth, growth Anybody that's grown seedlings knows that you like to have warm soil to grow your plants in. Uh, but that the soil will also act as a thermal battery, which will move energy from the summer into the fall and into the winter. <coughs> <coughs> now we did a bunch of thermal dynamic modeling on this particular greenhouse using this system, using the solar wall. And the model showed that this greenhouse using this system will never go below zero in a winter here in Kamloops, which is absolutely incredible. Now, that will work really well if you're trying to keep citrus alive, um, if you're trying to grow greens through the winter time, uh, any of those kind of cold, hardy crops are gonna do quite well in this greenhouse. However, um, if we really wanna amp the production up in this greenhouse, we actually did allow for uh, a gas line, um, which is not connected to any natural gas or propane at this stage, but if down the road we make a decision that we want to do a little bit more in the greenhouse and have the ability to add a bit more heat through the winter time, then we have the ability to add that with this line that we've plumbed through the wall. You'll also notice that we've got operable windows on the east side. So this helps with making sure that when you're in the greenhouse you don't feel like you're trapped in a space. So we can look out and see what's going on outside. But we can also open these windows up uh, and allow for a cross breeze through the actual greenhouse. So the venting in the greenhouse is, as I mentioned earlier, the bottom vents, these side windows. And then if we look up into the rafters, we've actually got vent holes up there as well. And those will have operable vents on them in addition to the bottom ones. Now you might be wondering why those are so small. Um, just given how the construction of this particular greenhouse, uh, we weren't able to go with any larger vents. And so if those are the only vents that we had, we might be in a little bit of trouble um, with overheating. But with the cross ventilation on both sides of the greenhouse, in addition to the garage door that's gonna go right here, the brain that's gonna operate this greenhouse is going to be able to open and close the top and bottom vents and it's also going to be able to open and close the garage door automatically based upon temperature or based upon when we need the garage door open or closed. So the computer or brain of the greenhouse, which is called the Habitat, which is a tiny little computer, is going to operate the solar wall. It'll turn it on and off based upon heating and cooling requirements. The garage door, again, based on heating and cooling requirements. The lower and the upper vents. And based on how it's set up, the brain itself, the habitat, will have the ability to add all sorts of other automations into it. So if we want to control lights, if we want to control uh, plant growing heat mats, if we want to control any number of things, we'll be able to do that with our, 
We can also input as many different sensors as we want. So we're gonna have soil temperature sensors in here. We're going to have uh, humidity sensors. We're gonna have air sensors. We're gonna have a sensor on the uh, solar wall. Um, so we're gonna be instrumenting this and that all will go back to that central brain, which will data log what's going on in the greenhouse as well as operate it. And then there's one other really cool feature with it, which is that it'll ha give us the ability to control the greenhouse and, and view it remotely on a smartphone. Um, which makes it kind of neat. Uh, so if, if our clients are not around and they want me to monitor it or if they want to monitor it from somewhere afar, um, they're going to have that ability to do that. So let's now go inside the kitchen and see what the in interior looks like. It is under construction like out here, um, but you'll get a sense of what we're trying to accomplish inside. Actually, before we go in, there's actually some, some really neat things that I should show you. Um, these are gonna become important later in the video. So behind this panel <coughs> and this panel are two holes that go down into the basement. One of these holes is going to uh, allow us to put a duct in here so that pressurized air from the root cellar is gonna be able to come out of this hole and into the greenhouse. And that's going to be an important piece a little bit later in the video, so just remember that. And then this hole right here also goes into the basement, and it's going to tie in or allow us to run a duct from the heat recovery ventilator, HRV, in the basement, which is sucking out the warm, humid air from the, green, from the kitchen and also from the basement uh, and exhaust this into the greenhouse. And this is going to have both of these two streams are going to provide CO2 and thermal energy from the building in the middle of the winter, spring, fall, and even summer, um, which will help with plant growth and regulating temperature inside the greenhouse. Now, before we go into the kitchen, I know you want to get in there. I want to show one more thing that's going to be really important to understand how the root cellar actually functions. So let's walk around the back of the greenhouse. You can get a sense of the shape and the size of it, um, but I want to go show you the inlet to the earth tubes. This is the back side of the greenhouse right here. And so if you, if you just back the camera up a little bit, you can kind of get a sense of the profile, so the front and the back, just so you get a sense of the shape and the size. <coughs> and then if you pan over here, that culvert right in the ground over there, that's the entrance to our earth tubes. So root cellars really like to be around, it depends on what you're storing, uh, and so there's actually a variety of conditions that you can um, keep in a root cellar in order to try and maintain optimal conditions for storage. And so if you're storing apples or potatoes or leeks or onions or garlic, they all have different conditions that they like. Um, and so you can't just have one root cellar and kind of be done with it. Sometimes you need to have multiple storage solutions. And so the earth it actually, and this is kind of an interesting pattern, um, and if you've done any permaculture, you'll relate to what I'm about to say, but a potato, for example, wants to be stored in a way that mimics what it would feel like if it was buried in the soil. And so 70% relative humidity and the temperature of the soil, four or five degrees Celsius, is almost perfect for a potato. So we're trying to build a room in a root cellar that mimics what that root vegetable would actually experience if it was still buried in the ground. So one of the things that people have done for centuries is build caves in the ground where they can dig up their plants at the end of the season, store it in this cave and store it over top of the wind over the winter so they have food during the non-growing season. And as a result of doing that, um, you've probably all heard of stories where humans have died uh, going into a root cellar to go get vegetables in the winter time. Somebody goes out and gets them, they die, or they see that somebody's died, they go in to try and rescue them and then they end up dying. And you end up with three or four or five people dead inside of a root cellar. And that's because of the decomposition going on in the vegetables. There's still a slow decomposition going on which releases gases and essentially eliminates the oxygen in the space and so it becomes anoxic and people die. So I don't want that happening um, and so what we're gonna what we did was we buried these pipes very similar to this with holes in them all the way up to the greenhouse into the root cellar 
about 100, 150 feet. And so this is the inlet to the greenhouse, or to the earth tubes. And so there's pipes right down there that are going to, if you come over here, you'll be able to see them a bit better. There's pipes that are buried in the ground right there. And so those go up to the greenhouse. And because of these perforations, we actually used perforated pipe and we wrapped it in landscape fabric so that dirt wouldn't go in here. And so the landscape fabric allows the moisture of the soil uh, to, it basically it acts a bit like a wick. And so moisture in the soil will wick through these holes and humidify the air. Um, and then in the summertime, when we've got you know 40 degrees Celsius out here or 30 degrees Celsius out here, last year it got to 50 degrees Celsius. It's gonna be really interesting to see how this system works in that kind of extreme condition. Uh, the air will get sucked into this barrel. We're gonna have a lid on top of here with a, a bug screen and it'll get pulled in and it'll go from 40 degrees Celsius down to the temperature of the earth as it conducts with these pipes and with the moisture in the ground. So what happens with this is that in the summertime, the hot air gets cooled down to the, say, the temperature that the root cellar wants. Uh, and in the winter time, the cold air gets warmed back up to what the root cellar wants. Because we don't want minus 20 air going into the root cellar, we want three or four degrees. And so this acts, this system acts as a humidifier, dehumidifier, as well as a heater and a cooler depending upon the season. And as a result of all of the hot air going through here in the summertime, the ground is gonna warm up and prepare, prepare the system for winter. And then in the winter time, the ground is gonna cool down as a result of all the cold air going through here and prepare it for the summer. So we get a seasonal shift or a thermal flywheel that helps us move from one season to the, to the next. So now let's go inside and look at what this system looks like. Okay, so these are the same pipes that come from that culvert outside and there's four of them together, they gang together into two. And each of them have this little port right here, which we can open up. And this will allow us to clean it out. So eventually we'll have a piece of nylon rope tied to this and we'll be able to tie a bleach or hydrogen peroxide cloth and then pull it through and clean these pipes out down the road if we ever need to get any debris or insects out of the pipes themselves. So just thinking about making sure we've got a clean out opportunity so that we can maintain it. And then the pipes come up into this piece of uh, PVC and this comes along the floor and there's a small little fan right here and this fan will, will pull a vacuum on the pipes and it's going to inject it into our root cellar on the other side. So let's go to the other side and take a look at that. Okay, so this is the root cellar and we've got four cutouts here uh, which are, have gravel in them and so these are going to naturally wick moisture up into the air. We had to design it with a cross in here to kind of give us the structural integrity on the concrete walls. Um, the duct we're just looking at comes out right here and it's going to blow air across the floor and make sure that we have fresh air coming in here at all times. Now we're gonna actually put a flow sensor on here so it'll detect if there's air movement and there's gonna be a red and a green light wired up top there. Two lights because if it's green, it means go, come on in, we've got a safe environment. And a secondary red one because if the green light happens to go out, the red light's almost never gonna be on and the red light will only ever turn on if there's no flow in the pipe. And so that way, when somebody comes in and they see a green light, they know that they're safe to enter because there's a, uh, an exchange of fresh air happening in the actual root cellar itself. Now if you look up on the wall over here, we've got a hole right in the wall and that was the hole that I was describing out in the greenhouse. And so the air coming from the uh, injection of air into this root cellar is going to exhaust out of one of those two holes into the greenhouse so the air has somewhere to go in here. The second hole, because you notice that there's two of them, 
is where the HRV air is going to go. And so all of the waste products inside of the, this space, the root cellar and the kitchen, um, will get exhausted out through those holes and be utilized by the plants and that space in the greenhouse. This will eventually have shelves in it, um, bins and all sorts of different storage mechanisms that will uh, allow us to store all sorts of food in here for long periods of time. Now, we'll just go back into that other room that we were just in because not only does that room provide us with the space for all of our earth tubes, but this room is also gonna be cool and dry. So we've got a cool and dry root cellar. We've got a cool and moist root cellar, two separate types of conditions. And then right above here, we're gonna have a dry and kind of moderate temperature. So we've got three different temperature zones in the greenhouse that provide us with different conditions for storing different things. So up above, we'll probably store things like flour, peas, um, any of the dry goods that we want to last for long periods of time. Down here, we might uh, uh, store things like onions or garlic, things that like to be a little bit more dry. Maybe squash would do really well down here. Um, squash kind of likes the coolest room in your house, and so this will probably be the coolest room in this house, but it won't go below zero. And then on the other side, we're going to do root vegetables, cabbage, those sorts of things that like a little bit more moisture um, and, uh, and quite a bit cooler. So that's the kind of three areas that we have for food storage. Um, and uh, now let's go back up and look at the kitchen space. Okay, so this is the cool dry room and it's on the back side of the kitchen. And this will be set up with shelves and all sorts of storage for kind of longer term storages of, of things like, like I said, flour, peas, beans, um, dry goods that don't want high temperatures. They don't want moisture, but they do want to be kind of at a stable, cool temperature. And so this will, again, will be filled up with shelves and all sorts of uh, storage, um, storage solutions to make uh, storing large quantities of food very, very easy. Okay, let's go into the kitchen now. Let's figure out how to turn this thing off. All right, so this is gonna be a full kind of commercial prep kitchen. So we're gonna have sinks. There's gonna be an island in here. There's gonna be a stove, two fridges. Um, it's going to be a very, very efficient space for preparing enormous amounts of food, preparing and preserving enormous amounts of food. Um, and so I'm really excited to, to be able to work in this space, to be able to take some of the food that we grow in the greenhouse and in the gardens. And it's going to be very efficient for us to uh, preserve it and move it downstairs into our storage mechanism. Uh, another reason that we wanted to do this out here, not inside of the house, is that when you're canning food and you're preserving it, you produce a lot of humidity and heat. We don't really want that in our house. And so with the heat recovery ventilator, that's gonna pull some of that humidity out of the space and pump it into the greenhouse. If we ever need to, we can open the doors in here to get a bit of a cross breeze through here. We've got another window over there. Um, we can open some of the windows in the greenhouse. And you can kind of get a sense of how how much light we're going to have in this space and how wonderful it is going to be to work in here um, to have the ability to, to do all this stuff with food and be able to look out into a lush greenhouse right here. One of the things we're playing around with right now is actually putting tropicals out into that greenhouse as well. So it's going to be a really amazing place for us to hang out. Um, I can't wait to be able to, to actually use this space. It's been a long time coming and, uh, and a dream come true. So yeah, if you have any questions about any of the systems that we've got in the greenhouse, uh, please feel free to put them in the comments and, uh, and we'll get to them. And um, if you're interested in a greenhouse like this, get in touch. We love building these systems for our clients and uh, if you ever find yourself out in the Kamloops region, get in touch and we might be able to set up a tour.